Okay, hello, hello everyone. This isn't so much a book review, but more more an overview of books I'm planning to read in the next month. Just to give you a heads up of the reviews that are coming and also, you know, if you happen to want to read the book at the same time as me and compare notes. I don't know, maybe you do. Um, but here's an overview of the four books that I'm planning to read in January. Um, I also hasten to add, by the way, before I start, I have recently joined a book club in my hometown and therefore one book each month will be from the suggestion that we have to do for the book club. And they aren't necessarily books that I would have picked myself, which I don't know is a good thing. People keep saying you should read outside your the areas that you're used to, the genres that you like. Sometimes though I find that there is a reason why I like the genres that I like. But anyway, we shall see. So first up is a classic, is Ursula Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. Now this is a sci-fi fantasy, uh, legendary, iconic book. And this is set on a planet um, with, which is very similar to Earth, except for two key differences. Firstly, um, the climate is semi-Arctic almost all year round. And secondly, everyone is of the same sex. And this is one of the first pieces of feminist sci-fi ever published and remains one of the most powerful pieces of fiction ever written about androgyny and is a really uh, apparently powerful examination on the effect of sex and gender on our culture and society. So how the hell I haven't read it yet, I don't know. And particularly when it's called The Left Hand of Darkness and I'm, as I'm sure all of you know, my most recent book that I published was called Darkness, and Darkness is about a battle of the sexes, uh, genders. So you'd think I would have been clever and made like a reference to an Ursula Le Guin classic in the title, but no, no, that is a, one of those fortuitous coincidences. It's actually a reference to Heart of Darkness, as it turns out. Uh, so, but I'm really looking forward to reading this, Ursula Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. Next up is a book that was published last year, this year, 2016, but last year by the time I get around to reading it, is Megan Bradbury's Everything Everyone Is Watching. And I picked this up almost entirely because of the cover. I am, I have a real weakness for New York. I think it's a, an amazing city. And this is a book about New York. And it follows four real life characters who were pivotal in the development of New York's landscape, its architecture and its culture and society at four pivotal points in New York's illustrious, short but very illustrious history. And that includes Walt Whitman at the end of the 19th century, uh, the architect and developer Robert Moses, who was a key figure in the development of this New York's famous skyline, Robert Mapplethorpe, in the 1960s, um, obviously as an arts and culture writer, there's a special place in my heart for Robert Mapplethorpe. So he was a key reason for me picking up the book and also to present day and the writer Edmund White. Megan Bradbury is a debut novelist and I'm always keen to support and read new work from new writers, especially female writers. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Everyone is watching by Megan Bradbury. Next up is also a debut book by Ross Armstrong called The Watcher. And this book has a real Hitchcockian vibe, rear window atmosphere to it. In it, we follow Lily, who is a bird watcher, and she spends her time in her tower block looking out her window. But of course, one day she sees, she sees an incident, she sees an event, and when it's then reported that an elderly lady died, she believes that she has some information which could unravel the reasons for this woman's death. But her interference in the case isn't going unnoticed and it soon becomes clear that Lily's own life could be in danger. Um, strong hook, strong setup. So I'm looking forward to reading this, The Watcher by Ross Armstrong. And isn't that an amazing cover? Isn't that an amazing cover? Great cover. Okay, so last but not least is Olive Ketteridge by Elizabeth Sprout. Now, this is Elizabeth Strout, sorry, Elizabeth Strout, Olive Ketteridge. Now, I know this is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, so therefore I'm expecting it to be good, and I'm slightly relieved that it's won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, because this is my book club choice, and it isn't a book that I would have picked up myself. As you can probably tell from the books I reviewed before, or from the three that we've just talked about, I really like books with uh, really big themes, uh, often political themes books, um, big ideas, great strong hooks. And this Olive Ketteridge seems to be 
a very gentle examination of people and lives. Now, sometimes those books can work. I absolutely adored, for example, Anne Enright's The Green Road last year. So I'm hoping that Olive Ketteridge will be in a similar vein. Olive Ketteridge is a retired school teacher who lives in the coastal town um, somewhere in Maine. And in it, this uh, is about Olive's struggles as she grows older and what she sees in the hearts and lives of those around her, um, all their triumphs and tragedies, their heartbreak and their joy. So I think this is a very different book and I think this hopefully is a very beautiful book. So I think this will be one that kind of breaks the heart, makes you feel warm inside. May not necessarily set you alight with great ideas and burning, um, passion or whatever and fire but this is could be a very beautiful book so obviously given what it's won obviously got a lot going for it so let's see how it goes Elizabeth Strout's Olive Ketteridge and those are my four books